Hi everyone, so today's tutorial is on the treatment and conditioning of what we call short stem roses. Now obviously, the longer the rose stem, the better the quality of the rose, and normally the bigger the heads, and the longer they're going to last. But normally if you're buying from your local supermarket, or maybe your local grocery shop, it's short stem roses that you're purchasing in. So I'm going to give you a couple of little tips and tricks that you can prolong the life out of them and get as long as possible. So the first thing with your flowers is remove the plastic, okay? The plastic stops the ethylene gas escaping. So all flowers give off ethylene gas, like roses included. But what happens is when there's plastic or cellophane wrapped around the flowers, the gas can't escape. And what ethylene gas is, it's a ripening gas or a maturing gas. It makes flowers grow old. So I think that's what happened to our faces. So when you have the plastic wrapped around them, the gas can't escape and it makes your flowers grow old. So by removing them, it allows the fresh air to circulate and then your flowers last that little bit longer. The next thing I recommend to do is cut off any elastic bands or tie strings that's tied around your flowers, okay? Because that can restrict water getting up the stem. It's a problem when people buy supermarket flowers, they forget to take the elastic band off the end of them. I would recommend investing in a stem stripper, which you can purchase here from Case Flower School on our website, flowerschoolireland.com. And what the stem stripper does, it easily removes any leaves or thorns that's on the stem. So normally we recommend remove the leaves below the water line. So any leaves that's going to be under the water in your vase, they're the ones that you remove. I wouldn't normally remove every leaf, you know what I mean? Like I'd leave one or two up the top because sometimes a rose stem can look a little bit naked if you remove every leaf off it. But also what it does, it's removing the thorns. Now it's not removing the thorn completely, it's removing like the little nip on the top of the thorn, okay? That causes the damage that sticks into your finger. And um, without actually damaging the stem. Where you'll hear people will say to you, get your scissors and scrape it up and down and it'll take the thorns off. And it will, but it'll also scratch the stem. And again, it'll damage the stem or leave open wounds and the flower itself can get infected. Now, the next tip is, especially if you're supermarket small-headed roses, I'd recommend that you get all your heads and you place them together. Now, we do have our guard petals still around these roses, but I wouldn't remove the guard petals at this stage. I would allow the flowers to hydrate first, okay? And then I would re remove the guard petals. And I'll cover that in another tutorial for you, okay? At a later stage. So place, they're normally sold in multiples of 10s or 20s. So place your 10 roses side by side. And what you then need is a sheet of brown paper, okay? You're gonna wrap the rose head firmly and securely in the brown paper. And this is why they have their first drink. So obviously this is not on display for your visitors to see. This is something you're doing in advance. So secure with a little piece of sellotape and that will help to support them while you're having their first drink. Now go and get your container ready. So maybe get your container. And I always recommend bleaching and sterilizing our containers. And I have that covered in another tutorial, again on YouTube or again on our blog, on our website, flowerschoolireland.com. Now, for getting rid of airlocks and stems, because roses and gerbils are both a flower that have a little airlock or an air bubble in their stems, which sometimes prevents the water getting up to the flower head. So there's a couple of different tips for getting rid of the airlocks. Most flowers, most flower shops, they would probably use the chemical quick dip or magic dip. And I have covered this in previous tutorials, which again, you'll find on the YouTube channel or our blog on our website. But for most of you that are working from home or that are just treating yourself to a bunch of flowers from your local supermarket, you probably haven't got the chemical. So what I'd recommend you to do, not just have a cup of tea, okay? Get yourself a mug, okay? And boil up the kettle of water. And put two or three inches of boiling water into the end of your mug, okay? Then you're going to get your stems and you're going to cut 45 degree angle cuts about one, two centimetres off the end. So one or two centimetres of the stem and you can see immediately the difference in the colour of the stem and whatever angle you want to cut, so cut on a 45 degree angle. Now the reason why I needed the couple of inches of boiling water was that when I submerge them stems down into the boiling water that they're all down in it and you're going to do this for 25 seconds. Now, if you're watching our other tutorials where I used a quick dip, by the way, I'm up to about seven or eight here at the moment. When I used the quick dip or the magic dip, we only placed it in the quick dip for one second. So whatever you do, don't get them mixed up. It's 25 seconds in the boiling water. We're up to about 18 or 19 now. And if you look into the boiling water when you're doing this, you'll actually see small little bubbles being released. 
and this is the air from the stem. So we're up to about 25 there. Obviously you time it, you don't keep talking when you're doing it. And you then place them directly down into your cold water. I've already added flour food to the water. The flour food will level out the pH levels in the water, will feed the flowers and will stop bacteria growing. Now I would say leave them wrapped like that for at least one hour. So in one hour, take the paper off, right, and then your rolls will be standing up straight. But like, don't start messing around making flower arrangements out of them. You want to give them a minimum of four hours in water before you start cutting them and making arrangements. Or I would even say eight to 12 hours. Like here at the school, we would leave them overnight in water till the next day before we actually start making items out of them. But chances are you're probably just displaying them in, in a vase. So remove the paper after an hour. The roses then will start to naturally blow. But if you would like to hold them back to stop the blowing open, maybe it's an occasion and you want, maybe the room is very warm, you can leave the paper on for one or two days. And that actually will again prolong the life of the flowers and hold them back to stop the blowing open. Hopefully you picked up a couple of tips there. We have lots more uh, free tutorials on tips and conditioning of all types of flowers. And as I said, using different chemicals and different methods. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching me on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. If you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, I'd really appreciate if you clicked share. And if you have any questions or feedback, feel free to comment below and I'll definitely get back to you. My name is Jeanette and I'm from Case Flower School.